Hello everyone and how's it going? Today I'm going to be looking at Loop Protocol's closed alpha test feedback. So we still don't have the closed beta test feedback yet. It's going to be sometime this month. So we're still waiting for some more news to hear from Bandai Namco. But in the meantime, I thought it would be interesting to look back at their previous alpha test feedback. So this may give some hints to how they are going to give the closed beta feedback and also what kinds of changes they are working to make, so what kinds of cha changes they made during from closed alpha to the closed beta, and what kinds of things we may be seeing more in the future. I, haven't, I hadn't been following Blue Protocol last year, so I only started following it this year, so a lot of this stuff is new to me. I d didn't know much about what they were doing in closed alpha and what kinds of changes they were looking to make, and how the game had evolved from alpha to beta. So for me, it's a lot of hearsay for hearing what other people said that during the alpha, this is what it was like and this is how they changed it, but it's still, it got worse, it got better. So I thought I would look through their, their article here, this is right on the Blue Protocol website, to see what they had to say during the closed alpha test. So they're saying that one of their main, first they start here by saying that their main concept for battles or the party versus party system. And they said that for, for these battles, currently the battles are being developed with the concept of party versus party in mind. But for the closed beta, there will only be specific areas and dungeons in, in the dungeons and uh, event battles where it's implemented. And we saw a few areas like in the story where enemies with a shield would stand in front of uh, the mage casters, the block damage, and things like that. So we saw some areas where this implemented, and it seems like this is their main concept they want to keep going forward, but in a way to, well, if you, with increasing difficulty later in the game, and overdoing the system could also be somewhat annoying. So they don't want to implant it, implement it for everything, but for the most part, for overall idea of battles, this is what they want to go for, it looks like. So I'm guessing since they only implemented it in certain areas in the closed beta, maybe we're going to start seeing more of this later on. So that's something that we could be looking forward to. And character creation, there was a lot of it about this going from the alpha to the beta test. So they wanted, people wanted to increase the number of parts, they wanted uh, height selection, they want to change body proportions, want more options, smaller chest sizes, or more voices and pitch selection. So for the closed beta test, they increased the selections for hairstyles, added scars, moles, lipstick, and makeup. They also added some movement to some hairstyles. So compared to the alpha test, they added option, and I also added the option for smaller characters and body shapes uh, selection in the closed beta test. And see what else they have to say here. Creation. Yeah, so the character creation, the cho choosing face type and body are one and one. So the face type and the body are connected, but they plan to add more selection options in the future. So, and then continuing on forward, they want to adjust the parts and add more voices and things like that. So it seems like this is their plan to keep increasing the uh, character creation selection, which is nice to know. And having more options is always fun, especially in a game that's going to be so focused on appearance. Let's go continue on. So for the closed alpha feedback, people were talking about the combat and action. And they said that there wasn't really a feeling of hitting enemies. It was just it felt really weak, and a enemies didn't really have a reaction to being hit. And it just kind of felt dull, dull combat, I guess, overall. So they added more hit reactions from enemies. They adjusted the camera um, controls, I believe, or camera movement and uh, motions. And uh, so they adjusted those, and then to make the action feel uh, better, 
they added cancel frames for things. So maybe that was part of the rolling. You could cancel, somewhat cancel out of things I felt like. Maybe they made it smoother connection between different motions because a lot of the times when you feel like a game is sluggish or it's not reacting very well, it's because you get stuck in an animation and you can't leave that until it ends. But having, I, I still s felt like there were some areas in the closed beta test where that remained. So maybe it'll get a little bit better, but I, I didn't really feel like it was too much of a problem personally. So I guess it most likely improved it quite a bit from the alpha to the beta. And I, I didn't see too many people talking about the uh, feeling of hitting enemies or the enemy reaction. So maybe that's uh, one of the main things they, they fixed from the alpha to beta. And what else do we have here? Okay, so there's not really a feeling of strategy. So monotone... Yeah, there, it just feels like monotone kind of feeling you get surrounded by enemies and you're just hitting them. That's all you're really doing. They want more strategy and cooperation involved for battles. And so what they had to say about that is, so for the battles and the action, these are some of the changes they're making. So they added uh, types. So I, I believe that's like the fire and whatnot. The uh, attributes or how, how do we, what would that be? It would be attributes or element types, I believe. That's what they're talking about and burst. So if you cooperate, you could build up something, looks like, and then burst the enemies. Accumulate something and burst burst damage. Oh, so I think th that is the just the elemental attributes that they added. But okay, so during the closed beta, there were the elemental attributes in the game. But one of the problem was it it didn't really feel like on the forefront. You may notice that an enemy looks like it's frozen or maybe maybe it's burning or something, but you didn't really feel it. Um, when you're just like looking at the screen, you didn't feel like, oh, there's the big burst damage I was looking for. It felt like that was lacking, so it might tie in kind of with the, the feeling of not hitting the enemy before, like the enemy's reaction or something like that, having maybe more of an effect or making it more obvious how many stacks of the tribute you have on the enemy would be better going forward. But it seems like that was one of the things they added, but I, I didn't feel that... I, I didn't feel like it was very impactful or I think it, it could be the right direction but I want to see maybe some more more things going in this direction definitely going forward so what else do they have to say the classes oh so class roles so they diversified the classes they give the class more definite roles compared to the alpha test and they gave them, um, they're adjusting, yeah, the, the role, and in addition to items, the uh, healing that various classes can do. And we saw that in the, the closed beta, the archer had an AoE heal, but some other classes were a little bit more lacking on the healing, so maybe that's the direction they're going forward, they want to separate things out more. At, but at what point do you, by separating this, do you just end up going more towards the Holy Trinity? I think there's a, that balance there of having action and being able to solo with every class, but also having the class diversity. And I think it's possible to do it. I mean, just healing maybe is one aspect that you can look at to do this, but there seems to be perhaps other ways to look at giving classes a, a feeling of more diversity. I would like to see how, maybe more of how this will also change in the future. What else do we have? So... So, okay, damaging certain parts of enemies. I think this also ties in with the Blast Archer. 
you could be able to hit weak points of enemies for extra damage in the um, raid battle during the closed beta you could uh, target the raid boss's tail and take it off so having this also maybe further develop for, for me at least like during the raid battle it didn't really feel like oh I need to target the tail first or for enemies I need to target this with the I I played the blast torture a little bit and being you could target specific areas for extra damage so that was a good feeling but yeah definitely maybe seeing more for this boss you need to target these areas first and things like that could be nice in the future and for enemies actions okay so watching enemies movement timing dodging or skills and going in for attacks they want to uh, increase the feeling of that so having I guess more rea reactionary or like having being able to I guess put, putting emphasis on watching the bat the flow of the battle is the best way to put it so if an enemy is about to do something you need to dodge back oh they're open to attack now you can go in you need to dodge you need to use a skill here and this is something I would also like to see more improved on going forward perhaps this also ties in with just skill diversity giving skills more time to shine at certain moments if you are fighting a certain enemy you want to use this skill here compared to the other skills so a lot of times the skills just felt like well, I could use either skill and it wouldn't matter too much at least when I was playing the closed beta there were times where I was feeling that so having to react a little bit more to the situation would be something I'd also like to see more going forward oh, so that for these yeah these are the all right so uh, let me just correct myself for a little moment here these these things I was talking about here the things I would like to see going forward these were things that people were requesting I believe yeah so the things in the box here so these are all things that also people are requesting and that's probably why I, I felt like I wanted to see these more so these are not things that they necessarily all put in but things that people were requesting and we did see some of them so they, they gave the they commented on this saying that they added the elemental tributes which also has the burst damage but like I was saying it was a little bit lacking and then so looking at the situation and acting you'd be able to increase damage mm. I I'm trying to think of wh in what situations this was um, happening in the close beta didn't really feel like it was too far out in the forefront but, but it, so that is something they said they uh so oh so they start saying acting and increasing damage up through so they want to add more situations where that is so perhaps it's not necessarily in the forefront of the close bid but something to come more later And so they gave roles to certain enemies, they were saying. So that's, yeah, that's something we saw with the shield enemies defending things. And enemies will act depending on their role. Yeah, the, the shields defending the, the spellcasters. And then roles themselves, they want to increase those more so. They changed some of the skills around. I did not see what the skills were necessarily were during the the alpha test. But yes, I, I believe it's saying that that they talk about more about the skills down below, so we can see those later. Okay, so here here's another one of the uh, complaints or feedback points from the alpha test. They were saying that. You need to keep clicking the mouse, so constant clicking the mouse while playing. 
and that was difficult to deal with. So they said they made it possible to continue doing normal attacks just by holding in the mouse. And it's an option you can turn on or off. And it's on by default. So I'm not sure if I was doing that during the close beta. I was clicking. I, I guess I didn't mind it too much, the, the clicking. But I can see how that can be an issue for, for some people. So having the option there. And it seems like it was on by default. So if I were to hold in, you can do that. One, one issue you can kind of run in with this is though they're saying that you can continue doing a normal attack by holding in but I, w I wonder how that worked with the blast archer being that by holding in you actually did a different attack depending on how far into your normal attack you are th the basic attack it seems like that would you just start doing yeah you do your speed boost right away that's how the blast archer works and maybe this is not something that you can use with the Blast Archer. So next next comment we had here was that the effects are just too over the top. Yeah, so that is still something I saw sort of too showy or shoot too gaudy. That that's still a complaint I saw mentioned a little bit during the closed beta, where just the screen would fill up with effects, especially during the raid where you had everyone using everything and the screen would just get filled with effects. But it's, this is how they, they dealt with it. They said they added uh, so options to for effect visibility in the menu. So it was probably an option, maybe turn them down or turn them off or something like that. Another one of the alpha test complaints was so climbing and dash motions like climbing and dashing are kind of lame <laughs> it seems so they're looking at uh, reworking and improving and fixing them the motions and they plan to uh, adjust the motions going forward having to take out, what was this, I believe, taking out the weapon, or putting away the weapon. Yeah, so putting away one's weapon. Oh, so this must have been something big during the the alpha test, but it, it said they added an option to automatically, or it made it so you automatically sheath or put away your weapon when you start running or dashing. So I guess before that wasn't in the game, so you <laughs> couldn't dash. Maybe you had to press a button in particular to dash, so that's a good thing they they fixed. So people wanting uh, invulnerability after dodging. So increase the, the, the invulnerability time or invincibility time after dodging. For the this must have been already in the closed beta, I'm guessing. Oh, and they added the ability to increase dodge distance, which is something I saw in the skill tree. I didn't get a test to a uh, chance to test it out too much, but that was something that was there. Okay, this is another thing I heard it about in one of the live streams, but the uh, reticle of your character would go right over right over top of your character so they would be on top of each other and be hard to see and they they adjusted the location i believe they put it off to one of the sides like the right side or so so it's not completely on top of the character when you're uh shooting with like the range characters the spellcaster or the the blast archer so next one so enemy so let me take a look at this one moment. Oh, I, I believe it's it's difficult to tell how targetable you are by an enemy. Maybe it's like uh, the aggro or 
uh, forget well, what's the word for that, you know, <laughs> where you pull enemies hate. Yeah, that's the so hate, enemy hate. It's difficult to, to see. So the people were asking for maybe a gauge or something to see that. So being able to see who enemies are targeting, they're thinking of ways to make it more obvious. As for targetability or... So they, they don't they don't have plans to make a gauge or something because it goes against their game concept so maybe we'll see more about how an enemy is targeting maybe an did they i'm not sure did they have that in the close beta like in like an arrow maybe going from an enemy to show that they're moving to attack somebody else now that's something uh to look maybe a little look back at some other videos to see if it's already in or something that's gonna be coming in the future so dealing with enemies is our next section here. So the first uh, point here is preparatory movement or motions are difficult to understand. So maybe an enemy's motion before they attack, it's difficult to read. And they're adjusting some of that for that. So. I don't know, I think an easy example would be in a closed beta, you could see the wolf enemies and you could see that they're getting ready to do a jump. So probably things like that is what they were adjusting. So, so this, remember this is uh, for enemies at the moment, but they're saying that, people are saying that enemies movement was kind of monotonous or simple. And they're, yeah, they're adjusting that. People want it, uh, a low chance for a weapon drop from enemies. But the common is that there would be no weapon drops from enemies. But there will be the key drops for making uh, battle imagines or imagine crafts or weapons. Uh, see, increasing weapon, or you could use it for increasing weapon strength, or items like that would be drops that they have. So we saw that with like the, the field bosses or the, the field events, where you could get items to be able to craft battle imagines and things like that, or going into dungeons you could get items for crafting weapons, so that seems to be where things are so it must be just for the imagine crafting as a drop otherwise you can get the crystals as drops to as a rare item to for weapon synthesization I believe it was to improve the weapon strength weapon level of uh, I guess not just weapons but imagine as well next up is the classes and skills Give me one moment to read through this. So they're planning to be able to to learn skills and then select skills from a board. So this is probably what we already saw in the closed beta being able to select between Two different skills or like you had the q q or the r skills or the t t skills and things like that where you could choose between the one you got earlier on or the one you could unlock starting around level 10 or so that's one thing so that would give more diversity even to like the same classes so even if the aegis fighter You could focus on more defense or more damage. Or you could focus on more support. You could kind of adjust your play style how you want it based on the skills. So they want to be able to give players the, the freedom 
to choose things as as they want to be able to free to, freedom to choose what type of direction they want to go with their class. They adjusted classes' roles. And they made adjustments to the skills. So we we saw the skills and whatnot during the closed beta. See if there's anything interesting you're talking about here. I believe most of this stuff is things that we, well, at least for the skill board, something, things we already saw in the closed beta. Interesting thing to note here is they stopped HP recovery out of battle. So evidently in the, the alpha they had that. Maybe that's to focus, give people more emphasis on buying potions. Or using healing skills, but if uh, this is also another one of the things I I kind of felt during the closed beta is not all the classes really had a good option for healing skills, but if you wanted to buy potions, they would take up your bag slots, which are also very limited. So you would somewhat be forced into perhaps carrying like a healing imagine. Which also somewhat limited. I, I feel like it somewhat limits build diversity. So I don't know. Maybe they don't really need the healing out of battle, but having some more options for healing. I know I know having parties and whatnot in these games are also important, like aspects of things. Being able to, well, you can't heal, but you have a healer with you, so it's okay. But for this kind of game or direction where it's like everyone can kind of focus on the build they like. Everyone, there's not a holy tr trinity. W when you're making that type of game, having a little bit more accessibility to healing on classes is something I would somewhat like to see. Not having to be forced to, to use like a healing imagine or something would be nice, but... I'm not sure if that will be changing more in the future or not, but yeah, one else what they're mentioning here is those in the dungeons you you get healing items to take with you. But the dungeons healing wasn't too much of a problem. You had a limited number of healing for that, and then I guess this ties into with not healing out of battle, because if you if HP HP becomes a limited resource that doesn't infinitely refill out of battle. And you need to be more conscious about how many items you're using during the dungeons, which I could see as a nice option. And they probably tied that in, well, if the dungeons are going to be like this, then we want the field to also be like this, but... It also leads to <laughs> solo play becoming a little bit more... I guess annoying, or not exactly difficult, but a little more cumbersome. Also kind of tying into the bag, but... Because if you wanted the potions separately, you would need to carry those. Or the healing imagine which limits the build but yeah i'm just kind of going in circles now so i'm gonna keep <laughs> keep going on so they want people also oh, they increase the number of healing drop healing uh i guess potion drops from the field i guess this is one of the ways they were looking at dealing with it and while i did get some yeah, the limited bag, bag space, it was the problem. Because you didn't want to be carrying the the potions with you when you needed to fill up your bag with items. Anything else here? Let me look at this for a moment. So, you don't have plans to highly increase the difficulty. This is one thing they're saying here. They're saying that during the alpha test, 
HP resource. There was a lot of ways of there was abundance of healing. And all you had to do was just hit the enemies to take them down. And you could just force your way through things. And as a way of balancing this, they needed to Well, one way would be to increase damage from enemies or gimmicks and limit the number, limit the availability to healing. But as a result, um, the action elements of the game would get kind of weaker and it would be, I guess, too polarized in how they would do it. So, I guess they wanted to avoid that. So to avoid that, so as a way of balancing all of this, they they made this uh, changes to the AP, uh, HP system or the healing. And what else did they have to say here? Yeah, so they made changes to maximum health and damage as well, as well as the above changes. And based on the feedback from the closed beta test, they're going to continue forward with more changes in the future. So. This would be one area that we could be seeing changed more going into the future. So I guess the healing and how they want the healing and damage to work together if they want to keep this healing as a limited resource. And as a limited resource, they, they do they keep healing restrictive to certain classes or only certain parts of you need to give up another skill to be able to use healing for your class and things like that. So this is one area that seems that they're still looking for a, a best answer to. So more feedback from the closed beta test would be something that would adjust this, I'm guessing. Let's look at other things here. So as part of the closed alpha test besides certain number of tests okay so uh, sorry for taking my time to read through this but uh during the closed alpha test at issue where you could only go through most quests only once but if you made a class change it would be hard for your character to level up So as a way to making leveling up classes easier, they added class specific quests. They made it easier to go into like beginning dungeons as a solo player as well for leveling up. In addition for, we got another thing here. For people that are using the range classes, or people are not really a cut, not very good with action-oriented games, they're adding a kind of like a assistive feature, oh, like a assist, maybe like a NPC that will assist you. I will aid you. So this looks like something that could be coming. They, they plan to add like this uh, NPC that can assist you, but in the CBT, it it's uh, not implemented yet. 
but they still have plans to implement in the future. So this looks like something that we could be seeing in the future in uh, one, one of the future tests, perhaps. This uh, assist NPC to help people that are having difficulties going solo. Okay, next we're looking at different aspects of the field. What do we have here? Well, let's start going through things, just maybe just a little bit faster. So, first thing is... They added... Uh, element of exploration. Or, um... F completion. They added the... I guess these are the points around the map. That where you could uncover cl clouds to give an exploration kind of feeling to the game. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I felt like that aspect could be fleshed out a little bit more. The markers themselves, you'd just kind of touch them and that would be the end. It didn't really feel too much like exploration. I, I would perhaps be fine with just like the clouds kind of unveiling as you move forward. Or maybe having cinematic points around the map at like certain important areas. You could watch something like a cinematic camera view of that area if you were to interact with it and it would reveal the map more or something like that. I'd like to see that expanded upon a little bit more. And they said they, well, they added damage for falling from a certain height. All right, and... I made it. Leave the let's see. <laughs> they made it difficult to explore some areas by having high leveled enemies. And by having that level difference, they increased, uh, I guess, the, the range for enemies to detect you. And maybe the, the range enemies detect players or uh, aggro the players depends on that level difference. Okay, so here's one of the complaints from the alpha test. So while you're being targeted by an enemy, using dash or jump uses up your stamina and you can't get away. So... They said with uh, adjustments to enemies, it'll be less common for you not to be able to get away from a large group of enemies because of the, the problems with stamina. But they're not going to change that um, being part of combat, dashes and jumps will use your stamina. They don't have plans to change that. They just adjusted perhaps how far enemies aggro or making it difficult to get away from enemies because you just all your stamina goes away. Next one of the things we had here is it takes time to get back from the field. People want warp or fast travel. And these were some of the things I believe we already saw in the closed beta. So maybe they didn't have these in alpha tests where you could fast travel. Yeah, so that's something that's already been implemented. So in all parts of the world, people want some kind of teleportation portal. And that's something we also saw during the 
closed beta test. They also started talking about the mount imagine to make travel easier, which was one of the complaints for people during the closed beta test because it was still a hassle because you had to go back to the town so much. So you you could go back to the town, but the the portals in the areas were limited, so you could go to a portal, but you could still be rather far away from where you needed to go. And you could use your mount, but then it would end really quickly, so you may not even get to the area you need to go with these options available right away. I guess people want to get there more quickly. We'll have to see if more changes are also going to be made to perhaps maybe the mount going forward. People were complaining about gathering motions and it made it so you don't have to hold down a key to gather, I believe. Okay, so things about sound effects and BGM. Hit sounds were weak, didn't sound very good. Field music was noisy. Uh, sound effect for completing a quest, I guess the jingle, didn't really feel like much of an achievement. These are things they are all adjusting. Dungeon matching party. So they're saying that for dungeons, they're planning for one dungeon to take somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. And that's how they're going forward with development. And the reason for this is they're thinking that it, if you're playing for a long time, you get tired out because of the action elements of the game. So they don't want to bind you to having to play uh, this kind of like action oriented game for a long amount of time. During the closed alpha test, people felt like the length of the dungeons was appropriate. And they're planning to go with around the same amount of time of dungeons going forward. Around 25% of people said that it was too short, the dungeon lengths. They're thinking about having difficulty options. Yeah, so difficulty options and changes to the map to adjust uh, the amount of time it takes to clear it. Perhaps as that was some of the things we saw in the closed beta where you could have a uh, harder version, an advanced version of the dungeons. But even so, the closed beta the dungeons were over in like a moment. I'm not sure, like not even five minutes for some of the dungeons. You'd be in and out just because everyone just rushed through. Seems like you could see the 10 to 15 minutes because the length of dungeons themselves aren't too long, but I definitely feel like they need to adjust this area still. I feel like they're too short. That's, that's what I think for the closed beta at least. Because uh, people would just run through all the content. Next up, um, so with a high level person, if you get matched up with them, enemies would just die an instant, and you would not be able to touch them. Better so uh, adding options to look for a specific. I guess filters for looking for party members. So... They said they added an adjustment to stats depending on the content level. I guess it would be like level scaling. And they said yes, yeah, so they had 
level scaling, but I'm not sure if I still felt like having a higher level player in your party when you're going through the dungeons was... The dungeons and stealth still felt too easy. Things wouldn't die in an instant like it was written in the, the complaint up here. But things would o be over like the last boss or so. <laughs> some of the, like, the early dungeons would die like that. <laughs> so Looks like it's, it's still an area they need to work on. Alright, here's another complaint. So having six members in a party is too much. In a full party, enemies feel really weak. They're still adjusting it. They're going to stick with the six player party. Everyone's silent. I want timing, like different moments to have communication. They added the shortcut keys for quick communication. Which is in the closed beta. Although you still can't use normal chat during the dungeons. But it might be something that changes in the future. Next up, matching. So it was difficult to notice when you were matched up for a party. And after you're matched up, you don't need a confirmation. Or they, they don't want a confirmation. That's what one of the complaints was. So they're going to work on making it easier to see that you were matched up. So that's something we saw in the closed beta, I believe. You could have it in the background and then it would pop up once you're in, once you're matched up. But yeah, they don't want people to have like AFK people. And so they want you to confirm that you're going to join. But if the matching doesn't work out, they keep looking for more members. So that's probably one of the changes looks like they made. Mm. What other things to be first. Let's keep moving on. It has a lot of information, looks like, for this alpha test. So we're only like halfway through, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start speeding things up. I apologize. I... I've been talking a lot. So let's look at what else we have here. The you want to remove weapon or health bars. Oh, inside like the town, they removed that. I believe they added options for things like that. Next up. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, options to buy multiple items with the slider, I believe. Oh, so character expressions. No, alpha test, they didn't really have expressions, they're rather expressionless. So yeah, in the closed beta test, that was fixed. Imagined item drop rates are low. So I guess you'd get the drops in the past, but now they made it a craftable item. So that means they could increase the the drop rates of the, the craftable items for them. People want automatic movement to a destination. People want to be able to see the map while moving. And this is something that they're going to put on hold for the moment. They'll think about maybe in certain situations where you'd be able to do this in the future. But people want the specific missions. I believe this is like the challenge quest. 
they wanted that displayed in maps and that's something we saw already. Portal times were around 10 seconds to use. They put that down to 5. Yeah, that 10 seconds does seem long. If there's any other things that we could see, maybe be seeing in the future, or still have, still may still be a problem. People were complaining about not having the story, but yeah, we had the story in the closed beta now, so that's fine. There was a complaint here about the size of the zones, and people wanted it to be seamless. And people want the increased number of players in the channels. So about the zones... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have, well, I guess we have the like large zones, but there's going to be individual areas that you kind of travel between where the loading will occur. I'm not sure what the state of alpha was, if it was just like one zone, so maybe that's why it felt small. And they say they want to keep uh, a cap on the number of players in a zone, I believe. Just because having too many players in an area would make it, perhaps it would affect enemy difficulties and things. Like enemies would, well not just the difficulty, but the number of enemies would go low and players wouldn't be able to level up and whatnot. Makes sense. People asking for party members to come to the channel automatically. Seems like party member channel something that seemed to be still an issue in a closed beta. I didn't get a chance to party up too much. I can't say. People want status is uh status effects on closed, but they say that they want it just to be something to have fun with the appearances. There's no plans to have status effects on the clothing. People wanting accessories, and that's something we saw in the closed beta. People wanted like options for, I guess, uh, like underwear or clothing under your main clothing. <laughs> Let's see. So this is something that's not implemented in the closed beta test. In the alpha test, the clothing underneath would change depending on what you're wearing. But this is something that they're... I think this is something that they're kind of under development with, so maybe uh, underwear options for characters. That's maybe something we would see in the future. People want a preview option for clothing, and that's something that wasn't in closed beta, but something they're looking at developing. As for other things, UI. Full screen's difficult to use. It's hard to see multiple quests. Font is small. The X button is difficult to understand. So they adjusted things for the closed beta, but they're still looking for additional feedback. And having the full screen menu is Something I still saw some people not liking too much about the 
the closed beta as well. I think the reason to have the full menu is it is easier for controllers to just have like a standard game window available but if you're used to a lot of uh, online games where you just use mouse and keyboard having separate windows for each thing for having like a quest window out where you can check on things is nice at times. Oh, people saying that they don't want the, the black bar underneath the screen. So this is something they added an option to turn on or off. I didn't realize the option and it was too, too late when I was clearing to close beta. It wasn't a big issue for me, but it just feels somewhat strange that they would <laughs> have such a beautiful screen and then take it up with a black bar. I mean, and perhaps having just something else as the default instead of the black bar. Because you, you can turn it off, but why is the default that is something I want to somewhat know. I'm not sure if that will still change or not. Chat stamps and emotes. These are some things we saw in the closed beta. Item crafting. So for cameras, um, here's one thing I see. Enemies are, when enemies are close, can't see the enemy HP or debuffs. So when you lock on at the bottom or oh, at the top of the screen you can see the HP you'll be able to see the targeted enemies HP but they are considering options to make it easier to see without locking on as well A print screen option for screenshots. Well, some complaints about the quality of the screenshots for the closed beta. Maybe that's something they'll expand upon more later. Let's continue on. People don't want having to hold F for things. Looks like they got rid of the things where you, where it's not needed to hold the button down. So maybe I think it still remained for a little thing, a little bit, but I didn't see many complaints about it. So probably fixed for the most part in the closed beta. So auto run options, I believe that was added. It was difficult to select other players. They added a cursor option to do that. Something about game pads. Not much help or tutorials. So they want people to add. Oh yeah, so for close beta they fix that. And then the last one, um, 4K or ultra wide monitor support. So with the anime styled graphics, having a 4K resolution it may be difficult to get the full effect of it. So they're planning not to focus on that currently. They're going to focus on other things first. Yeah, so then it seems like they're not planning to do perhaps think about doing it at the necessary time. So not now, maybe later 
is the main thing. So that was just perhaps not very quick, but a look over of some of the things that players commented about the closed alpha test, some of my own thoughts about the closed beta test, and perhaps uh, we'll see a similar format for their feedback for the closed beta coming up this month. So if you enjoyed the video, let me know. If you I don't know, want to support me or anything more, <laughs> yeah, feel free to subscribe or anything. But anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you later.